Well, a new South Carolina poll shows that 31 percent of voters in the Palmetto State are unsure about who they would vote for if the primary were held today. Meanwhile, Mitt Romney came in ahead of his fellow candidates with 22 percent of support, followed closely by Herman Cain, who received 20 percent. Newt Gingrich came in third with 10 percent of that vote, which was just barely ahead of Rick Perry. Now, Ron Paul receiving 4 percent of the vote, along with Michelle Bachman at 3 percent, John Huntsman, Rick Santorum rounding out the group with just 1 percent each. Could those numbers change after tonight's debate? Joining us now with his insight, former South Carolina Republican Party Chairman Van Hipp. Welcome. Great to have you on board today. It's great to be with you. It's a great day for a football game and a national security debate at Wofford College here in Spartanburg. Indeed it is. Okay, so far we've heard very little discussed about foreign policy issues in the debates that have taken place to this point. But with tonight's focus on international issues and defense, there's no escaping it. At a time when the stakes remain high around the world, who do you think stands to gain the most when so few of these contenders have real foreign policy credentials? Well, you know, we're calling this um, the commander in chief's debate. I think this is the most important and significant debate that we've had uh, to date. None of the other debates have really touched on foreign policy or national security. And the reason we have a federal government in the first place is to provide for the national security of the American people. So I think the people here in South Carolina and all, of, all over the country are going to be looking at each of these candidates and asking themselves the question, who is ready to lead on day one in the Oval Office and who can, uh, is best prepared uh, to be commander in chief? Do you see any one candidate as a standout who seems to be positioning himself or herself to, to be see, at the head of the pack in this debate? I see strengths uh, uh, in, in, uh, with, with, with each of them. Uh, uh, for example, you know, uh, uh, you know, Newt Gingrich with a real sense of history, Michelle Bachman uh, with her service with the Intelligence Committee, Governor Huntsman uh, with his uh, background in China, and the China threat I believe is one of the biggest threats facing the country today. Uh, you've got uh, 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 Mitt Romney, a good uh, fundamental standing of international economics, as Carl just mentioned, uh, and then Santorum with his service. I mean, uh, uh, they each bring something. Herman Cain. Uh, gra the only uh, 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 candidate running with a graduate degree in computer science and the cyber threat is a real major problem with, uh, with the uh, c country from a national security standpoint. Well, so I think each of these candidates brings something unique from a national security standpoint all right. to the debate. To be fair, of course, Barack Obama had no real foreign policy experience either when he assumed his position at the White House. But the White House is going to campaign on everything from getting our number one enemy, bin Laden, to helping the Libyan people overthrow Gaddafi. Does the president hold the upper hand on national security at this time? Well, you know, a lot of the, uh, what, what really happened is for, and, and I gave, I, I wrote an op-ed uh, uh, giving uh, the President uh, Obama a full credit uh, on that, but let me tell you, a lot of the policies that he had in place were policies that President Bush put in place from a national security standpoint as far as al-Qaeda was concerned and capturing bin Laden. So a lot of the credit does go to President Bush. But let me tell you, President Obama is a great debater, he's a great pontificator, and we've got to have a strong candidate with a fundamental understanding of national security and foreign policy policy who can go toe to toe and who's prepared to go toe to toe with President Obama. No question, it's going to be a tough uh, a race and it'll be a tough debate with him this time next year. Let me ask you really quickly, what do you make of Herman Cain's comments when he says he'll get smart on foreign policy issues the way he learned about running a pizza empire saying, quote, I had never made a pizza, but I learned. Can the GOP afford to back someone who admits he'll have to have on the job training with international affairs if he wins the White House? Well, you know, I heard him make that comment, I believe, on Neil Cavuto's show. But, you know, I go back and I look at people like President Reagan, for example. He had a great philosophy. Surround your, a great a leader will surround himself with people who are smarter than he is to make decisions. And so will he bring in those right military and national security uh, 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 advisors and, and and manage them in such a way so that he can make good, sound executive decisions? Uh, that's his, and, and, and it's all about management style. All right, so tonight the focus is on foreign policy, and you say you think it's the most important debate to date at this point. I do. All That's right. the reason we have a federal government to provide for the national security of the American people. All right, sir. Thank you so much for joining us with your insights. We look forward to the debate tonight. Hope you enjoy the football game, and uh, we appreciate hey, it. Go Terriers, and, and great <laughs> to be with you. Great to be with you, too.